Hello my friends, today we will be comparing Sony a7 IV and a7R4A. This one should be pretty straightforward, although there are some nuances mostly caused by the fact that the a7 IV is a newer camera. a7IV's resolution increase may have also made it an interesting option for dedicated still shooters, but the R version still offers almost twice as much resolution. In this video we will try to find out whether you should go with Sony's dedicated high resolution special or with a more versatile non-R a7 IV. Both R and non-R a7 IV use what can be described as a 4th generation Sony body, but there are some significant differences. Both are very compact cameras, but the a7 R4 is noticeably thinner. The weight is basically the same though. Probably the most significant difference is that the a7 IV uses a rotating screen, whereas the a7 R4 uses a tilting screen. The build quality is generally very good. Both use a magnesium frame and feel very solid. The weather ceiling should be a lot better in comparison with older Sony cameras. a7 R4 has an edge in terms of the build quality just because of that tilting screen mechanism, which is more solid and durable. One of the main differences are the sensors. Both are full frame and both are BSI. The a7R4 sensor offers 61 megapixel resolution, whereas the a7 IV sensor is 33 megapixel. So how big is the difference in the real world? As always, that depends on the viewing device or printing size. Obviously, if you are viewing the pictures on a 1080p screen or on a smartphone, you won't see any difference in terms of the details. You can see a difference on a large 4K screen, but it is not a striking difference. You will see the biggest difference on an 8K screen or with large fine art printing. A very practical use of a7R4 resolution is cropping. 61 megapixels gives you huge headroom for recomposing. Even with 1.5x APS-C crop, you will still get 26 megapixels, which is basically Fujifilm XT4 image quality. A7 IV has still enough resolution for cropping if you use common publishing methods. Here it really depends on individual requirements. Regarding the ISO or low light performance, there is basically no difference after the downsampling. Both are super clean and virtually indistinguishable below ISO 3200. ISO 6400 is usable for most platforms. ISO 12800 is mostly usable for documentary purposes. There is a lot of noise on both at ISO 25600, so that is mainly an emergency option. The dynamic range is also pretty much identical and therefore outstanding. For digital publishing, you can push it as far as you want to. I generally don't think that the dynamic range will limit your printing or publishing options in the vast majority of situations. Even in very challenging light conditions, I was always able to extract enough information from the RAWs without introducing too much noise on both. A7R4 has one more trick up its sleeve and that is 16 shot pixel shift mode with 240 megapixel resolution and immense amount of detail. It also offers a very interesting 4 shot mode which still gives you 61 megapixels, but it bypasses the debiring process which greatly increases the image quality. Both cameras use newer version of Sony's color science. Sony aims for maximal accuracy and that is basically what you will get. The colors are not overly warm or vibrant. Stills and video shot with picture profile off and unedited RAWs look almost identical. The autofocus systems are a bit different. A7 IV uses the latest system with 759 phase detection points and 425 contrast detection points. A7R4 uses 567 phase detection and obligatory 425 contrast detection points. Both will perform great in the usual situations. Both are very fast and 100% accurate. The smart features are also very similar. Both have real-time eye autofocus in both stills and video. The difference is that the A7R4 works with humans and animals, whereas the A7 IV also has bird eye autofocus. Both also have normal touch tracking, which works very well. The only difference in the autofocus performance will be visible in fast action shooting. A7IV's newer autofocus system will give it an edge. How much of an edge depends on the situation. 
The difference in video autofocus is a little bit more noticeable. A7 IV is a bit smoother and more committed. A7 R4 will still work great in reasonable scenarios. A7 IV has 7 settings for autofocus speed and 5 for sensitivity or responsiveness. That allows you to fine-tune the autofocus behavior very precisely. A7 R4 has 3 speed settings and 2 responsiveness settings. That is also sufficient for more stills-oriented cameras such as A7 R4. Overall, the A7 IV has an edge in terms of the autofocus. Both cameras most likely use the same in-body image stabilization unit rated for 5.5 stops. It is highly effective and I especially like very predictable behavior of this IBIS which is not trying to fix the image in place and then snap when it can no longer do so. I would say that it is sufficient for static shots up to about 75mm. Much like with every Sony camera, the body size to stabilization efficiency is excellent. As I've said before, I think that it is a very underrated IB system. A7 IV has two advantages when it comes to video stabilization. It has active mode which combines in-body image stabilization and digital stabilization. The additional crop in active mode is about 1.1 times, which is quite acceptable. It works very well and it definitely makes a big difference. The other advantage is the option to use gyro data. It can store the gyro data within the normal video file and these can be used to stabilize the footage using Catalyst Browse software. A big difference are the video specs. Both can shoot 4K video with no crop up to 30p. The difference is that the A7 IV uses all pixels to downsample 7K video to 4K. This is the most detailed 4K video of all cameras that I've ever tested. A7 R4 has to use line skipping because downsampling 9.5K would be too much. That means that the video is not as detailed as with the A7 IV. It is basically a reverse situation from the stills image quality. The A7 R4 video is still very detailed and the difference in comparison to fully downsampled video might not be obvious unless you know what to look for. A big difference is that the A7 IV can shoot 4K in 10-bit 422. That is important if you want to color grade your footage or publish in BT 2020. Especially if you want to use picture profile with a flat gamma curve, you definitely need that 10-bit color information. If you want to shoot log, the A7 IV is a clear choice over the A7 R4. I have explained how some other picture profiles work on the A7 IV in my original review, which will be linked in the description. A7 R4 can only shoot 8-bit 420. Despite that the 10-bit capture is a great feature, 8-bit codec on A7R4 is still sufficient for the majority of SDR publishing. If you use it with semi-flat picture profiles such as picture profile 8 with gamma change to Cine 4, you will even get solid flexibility for color grading. I don't recommend shooting lock at all with A7R4. A7 IV can also shoot all intra video, but the long GOP is great nowadays, so I would only use that if your project specifications require that. The Super 35 or APS-C video mode is quite interesting on both. On A7 IV it allows you to shoot 4K in 60 frames per second. It still uses 16 megapixels in APS-C mode and the video is downsampled from 4.6K up to 10 bit 422, so it actually looks really good. Sure, no crop 4K 60p would be better, but it is still a very valid feature. A7R4 can't shoot 4K 60p at all, but it can shoot APS-C video downsampled from 6.2K. This video is very detailed and it is a useful feature if you want to use APS-C lenses or get more reach from full frame lenses. A very useful feature on A7 IV is the focus breathing compensation that can completely remove the focus zooming in video using Sony's clear image zoom technology. I have talked more about that in my A7 IV review. A7 IV also has other video related advantages such as full size HDMI, an option to use both internal and external display with no blackout and so on. The A7 IV is without a doubt a significantly more advanced video camera. The A7R4 can't compete in this regard, but it has very solid video specs for a stills-oriented camera. The handling and the controls are very similar. Both use the new larger grip which is variable shaped and has a nice grippy texture. 
The placement of the controls is very logical and everything is easy to find and reach. As always, there are three command dials, a joystick, an exposure compensation dial and 12 customizable buttons. There are three differences though. The first one is that the video recording button and the C1 button are swapped, but you can reprogram those however you want to. The second difference is the still slash video switch on A74. This is extremely useful because it lets you choose which settings will be carried over between stills and video and which will be independent. This is very important if you want to use different settings to shoot stills and video. I don't miss it that much on the a7R4 though, because it is a more stills oriented camera. The third difference is that the fourth dial on a7 IV is programmable, but I still use it for exposure compensation. The most significant upgrade in terms of the handling is the new user interface on a7 IV. The user interface on older Sony cameras, including a7R4 was pretty bad. The order of the items in the main menu has some logic, but it is very poorly structured. The a7R4 has some menu upgrades, such as the graphic interface for button settings and so on. a 74 is a completely different story. Unlike on a7R4, you can control everything using a touchscreen. The main menu is very well structured and easy to navigate. This is in my opinion the best user interface of all camera brands on the market. It took some time, but I am happy to say that Sony has completely fixed the menus. The a7R4A dominates when it comes to the display and electronic viewfinder. The a7R4 uses 2.36 million dot display. That is more than twice the resolution in comparison to a7R4's 1.04 million dot screen. The display on a7R4A is very detailed and generally a joy to use. The display on a7IV is actually surprisingly fine to use. The aspect ratio is also 3x2 instead of 4x3, which is better suited for hybrid use. It is definitely not as detailed as the a7R4A display, but it is ok. The brightness is also sufficient on both, but the a7R4 is again better. One more difference is that the a7R4 uses a tilting mechanism, whereas the a7IV uses a fully rotating screen. As I've explained in the past, I much prefer tilting screen on a7R4. Regarding the electronic viewfinders, both cameras use 078 times magnification, but the difference is again the resolution. a7 IV uses a very good 3.68 million dot panel. The a7R4 uses a great 5.76 million dot viewfinder. Both can go up to 120 Hz and both are more than sufficiently bright. A7 IV EVF is definitely sufficient, but that extra resolution on a7R4 is very nice to have. Both cameras can shoot 10 frames per second with autofocus continuous and mechanical shutter. Both can only do so with compressed RAWs. This number is more impressive on the a7R4 since it manages that with a huge 61 megapixel resolution. That gives you a great flexibility for cropping, which is very important in wildlife photography. The buffer capacity is also very impressive at about 75 compressed RAWs. The biggest advantage of the a7 IV in terms of the speed is that you can have basically unlimited buffer, but only if you use CF Express Type A card. 33 megapixel resolution also offers solid cropping options and the autofocus is fantastic. Unfortunately, the shooting speed with uncompressed RAW is pretty low. As I mentioned, the a7 IV has that CF Express Type A slot, which is combined with UHS-2 and also another UHS-2 slot. A7R4 has two edges, two slots, which is definitely sufficient for this type of camera. Both cameras use Sony NP-FZ100 battery. For some reason, there is a big difference in official rating, which is 670 shots with A7R4A and 580 shots with a 74 The real battery life is very similar on both. You can get anywhere between 700 and 2000 shots, depending on the specific usage. The battery life on both a7 IV and a7R4 is still the best in their respective classes. The final decision between the a7 IV and a7R4A should be pretty easy. a7 IV is a great hybrid camera with balanced performance in both stills and video. a7R4 is a more niche, stills oriented camera with incredible output. The a7 IV is an obvious choice for hybrid users who care a lot about the video. 
A7R4 video is sufficient for shooting some video on the site, but I don't recommend buying it mainly for the video. For those who mostly shoot stills, it comes down to the resolution. If you can take advantage of that 61 megapixel resolution of the A7R4, it will be a great choice. I highly recommend it to landscape, product and portrait photographers who use demanding publishing platforms such as large fine art printing or 8K. I also highly recommend it to image quality enthusiasts such as myself. If you don't need that kind of resolution, the A7 IV is probably a more reasonable choice for still shooters. There are some other nuances such as the autofocus systems, screens and electronic viewfinders and the new user interface on A7 IV, but I think that it really comes down to the video specs and sensor resolution in this case. I hope that this video has provided the necessary information and that it will help you make the right decision. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you like this video and that you have found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.